I want you to both take a peek over your shoulders at all the people here today. We're here with you today because we believe in you and we're committed to your marriage. We want you to win. We'll be in the front row cheering you on as you move through life together. Today is just the beginning. And as much as we are supportive of you both, nobody wants this marriage to win more than God himself. He cares more about you and your lives put together, or your lives together than all of us here put together. We want to take some time today to look at his plan and purposes for marriage. Because from this day forward, you'll begin laying a foundation for your marriage. Our desire and prayer is that you build on a solid foundation. In Ephesians chapter 5, God gives us a blueprint for what this solid foundation looks like. The first instruction is to both of you. Verse 21 says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Imagine a picture that will help you understand this. Two people, a husband and wife, both kneeling at the foot of the cross. It symbolizes the surrender of their lives to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. He is the center of both of your lives, and out of reverence for Him, each of you is called to live a life of sacrifice and surrender on behalf of one another. You're each called to sacrifice, you're each called by God to sacrifice for one another. The reality is, for this marriage to work well, it's going to cost you something. I once heard someone say, marriage is like a phone call in the middle of the night. First you get the ring, and then you wake up. While it may be a little pessimistic, there is a kernel of truth. If you think that when you wake up tomorrow, a marriage that is life-giving to both of you, puts wind in your sails, and is honoring to God is just going to happen, you'll be greatly disappointed. It will take a lot of hard work, intentionality, and mutual sacrifice on a daily basis. Marriage is often portrayed as a 50-50 proposition in our society. Each of you is to meet the other halfway. On the surface, it sounds great and it sounds fair, but there's a problem. 50-50 is impossible to define. How will you ever know if you're there? One person will always feel like they're getting the short end of the stick. A 50-50 marriage makes it, about a, makes it about a willingness to sacrifice based on the performance of another person. As long as you do your part, I'll do my part. There's an exchange. And as long as you're sacrificing a little, I'll sacrifice some too. Fortunately, God has a very different plan than 50-50. In God's plan, both of you need to resolve not to try and find halfway, but to be willing to go all the way, 100% willing to live lives of complete surrender and sacrifice on behalf of the other. In the sight of God and these witnesses, you've affirmed your choice of each other by the giving and receiving of vows and these rings. As a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I pronounce that as of this moment, you are husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now my privilege to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Drew Larson. favorite answered prayers. 
Love is patient, and this sweet girl right here has been so patient to find a love like yours. I know I speak for a lot of people when I say I cannot <laughs> think of a better match for our sweet Emily. I know this because Emily is the same amazing woman that she has always been, but better. <laughs> you bring out that sparkle in her eyes and that little Emily giggle that all of us love and cherish. So I first heard about Emily um, when I was talking to Drew's uh, parents, um, and I was very surprised. I was, you know, I, uh, you know, his mom told, taught, told me, she's like, I have a very special feeling about this one, um, which was about a month in, so it was very early. Um, and so I instantly called him to kind of get the, the details. He wasn't very forth forthcoming, he was very coy about it, um, but the once I kind of broke through the being cool about it, you know, he really started to talk about, you know, how excited he was, how she was always up for going on an adventure, how, you know, he was just enjoyed being with her. He asked me for permission, honorable thing to do. He was thinking ahead and he asked me like three or four hours to meet me for breakfast. And so I had three or four hours to think of my response. And I'm, again, I'm feeling sorry for myself. I'm walking along wondering, well, why didn't he just ambush me? So I didn't have to think about it. But anyways, uh, Drew, Emily, Megan and I are so proud of you guys. We're so proud of what you represent. We want to thank you, Drew, for being a part of this family. And we want to thank you for bringing everybody else with you as part of this family. Closer